So continuing on, we're going to go ahead and look at the force for now option, which is this little checkbox right here. The force for now option basically allows you to define the reflectivity of the object exclusively by using the ND value and more or less ignoring the values of the reflectance 0 and 90 chips. Now that's not to say that it'll ignore the color, just the value information, which we've already discussed. So let's go ahead and take a look at some renders and some materials to describe what is actually going on here with this force for null option. The first set here have different NDs, but they all have no force for null. The second set have the exact same NDs, however, they do have force for null. So let's look at that in Photoshop. So here we go, I've got the two renders, one on top of another, so we can see them very easily. And here we have an ND of 1.001, which again is error. We're at roughness zero, which is important. When you're working here, when you increase the ND to two or three or four, what you'll see is that the force for now is going to have a much more immediate impact in terms of making the object both brighter and more reflective, which is actually the same thing. And here, without the force for now, it's using those color chips to decide, okay, how much of the color is going to be reflected, along with the ND, and it's kind of all in a big mix. This is a much more pure result, and because of that, it's a lot faster to get exactly the result you're looking for. So we'll take it all the way down here, and we'll take a look. We're, we end at 20. So here at 20, you can really see the difference. I mean, it's like night and day. This is kind of dull and gray looking. And this has that nice clean brilliance that you would expect for a really highly reflective metallic surface. And that's something worth noting is that generally speaking, an ND of 10 or above is kind of where you want to be for metallic surfaces, unless you have specific ND plus K measurements that you're going to use. But if you're not using K, then generally speaking, 10 or above is where you want to be for metallic surfaces. Now, ND goes all the way up to 1,000, so you know you can, the sky's the limit as to how reflective you can make your object, but at some point it becomes obnoxious and you probably don't want to do it. But some people do go as high as 20 from metallic surfaces. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the next set of materials. So in here, part two, intensity. We've got a bunch of materials, and the idea being here is that we're working with colors. So what I have here is a material that is a hue of zero, and a saturation of 128 and a value of 120, which means this is a middle red value. And we've already talked about these measurements before. So basically the idea being is that some of these have force for an L turn on and some don't. But I'm going to change the colors so that we can see how the color shifts between these two chips will affect the materials. So let's go ahead and take a look at that render. That's FF part two. So here we go. These are both the exact same material. They both have the same middle value, sort of dull red for the reflectance 0 and reflectance 90. And this one has force for null enabled and this one does not. So you can see immediately that ND of 3 really kicks in very nicely for this one. And you're still left with something kind of dull here because those reflectance 0 and 90 colors are dull, particularly the reflectance 90 color, which generally speaking tends to be brighter and it's not here. So Immediately, you'll notice here that I did increase the brightness on these reflectance 90 colors, and that makes this look a little bit nicer, a little bit more like what we would expect. But the force for now still looks better. And you'll also notice that the difference between these two is negligible, whereas the difference between these two is substantial. So this is an advantage of using the force for now option, is that you're going to get great consistency. As long as your ND remains the same, you can change the colors to whatever suits your needs and not have to worry about things giving you unpredictable results in terms of reflectance. So let's go ahead and take a look further down. So again, here I've increased the brightness of both the reflectance 0 and the reflectance 90 to 255 and enabled the force for now and disabled the force for now. And you can see here that this again looks a little bit nicer over here than it does on this one. But the force for now one looks more or less the same as it did before. So that great consistency that we're getting from Force for Now that we don't have when we're using the regular ND plus reflectance 0 and 90. Now, over here, I started to go in the opposite direction. I said, okay, well, let me go ahead and darken the reflectance 90 color, which is generally speaking a bad idea. However, here with the Force for Now, we don't notice any ill effect from it at all. Here, it looks kind of unnatural because we're go going dark on the outside edges and we're shiny in the middle. And then 
Over here, I went even more crazy. The reflectance 90 here is really bright, and the reflectance 0 is almost black. But again, the Force for Now, you don't see hardly any difference, whereas without the Force for Now, you really see what's going on with those reflectance colors. And you can see here, I've got black for my reflectance 0 and 90, and again, it's still the same. So, what is the point? The point is, when you pick colors with Force for Now, the color is what comes through, the ND is what determines the reflectance, and you don't have to worry about whether or not your reflectance 90 or 0 colors are going to be calculated correctly to give you the effect that you're looking for. The ND takes care of it. So let's look at the third set here. So go back over here. The third set is part 3 roughness. And basically the idea of these is that I did the same thing. I used the middle gray red values, but what I did was I increased or decreased the roughness to show you how roughness would affect both the force Fresnel objects and the objects that don't have force Fresnel. Again, the same material, force Fresnel enabled, force Fresnel not enabled. So this is just the exact same thing we saw before. I just wanted to remind you of what that looks like. However, when we go up to roughness of 20, you can see that the differences are less obvious. And then we go to roughness 40, and again, the differences become even less obvious. To the point where we're at roughness 60, 80, all the way up to roughness 100, which is Lambert. And I only put the one here because there is no difference between Force Fresnel on and Force Fresnel off at roughness 100. As a matter of fact, when we go to roughness 100, which Let's see here, roughness of 100. You'll see that Force Fresnel is grayed out. You can't click it. You have to be at at least something like 99 in order to even be able to turn that on. So the higher the roughness, the more that we're going to be using the reflectance 0 and 90 colors. The lower the roughness, the more that the ND is going to kick in when you have Force Fresnel turned on.